Are you taking Praxis Mathematics Test 5165 with the subtopic Tasks of Teaching Mathematics? If so, then this is the video for you. My name is Tom, and I am a test prep expert here at Study.com and a certified math teacher, and I'm going to walk you through some of the types of problems you may see on this test. So let's get started. What prior knowledge should a teacher activate to help students understand the concept of the distributive property? Is it knowledge of addition and subtraction, the ability to solve basic linear equations, familiarity with combining like terms and algebraic expressions, or understanding of multiplication as repeated addition? The key to looking at this problem here is we want to activate to help students understand. So we're talking about the building blocks of the concept of the distributive property. So while knowledge of addition and subtraction are important, it's not really the building block for the distributive property. Okay, so I'm going to eliminate that choice. The ability to solve basic linear equations, that would be steps after we learn the distributive property where we're moving things from one side of the equal sign to the other, steps like that. So I'm going to eliminate that choice. Familiarity with combining like terms in algebraic expressions, that would be similar to the second choice where that is kind of the building blocks for solving equations where we're combining like terms using addition of sub subtraction. So the best answer here would be understanding of multiplication as repeated addition. For example, if we had 5 plus 5 plus 5 is getting the students to understand that this would be 3 times the quantity 5. So we have 3 5, so 3 times 5 is 15. So both of these answers equal 15. The image shows a pie chart divided into eight equal slices, with three slices shaded to represent the fraction 3 eighths. Another pie chart shows five slices shaded out of 10 to represent the fraction 5 tenths. What makes the pictorial model a useful tool for understanding fractions? Is it it visually demonstrates the part to whole relationships? Is it provides a precise numerical representation? It uses different shapes to represent fractions, or it simplifies complex fractions operations. All right, so the first thing I'm going to eliminate here would be the last choice. Complex fraction operations, that's getting into multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So I'm going to eliminate that because the pie chart is not going to help us with that. Different shapes, so we're really not putting different shapes in here to represent the fraction, like comparing two different types of shapes. So the pie chart is consistent with a circle with slices of the pie. So I'm going to eliminate that choice. It provides a precise numerical representation. Well, in this case here, it does show a numerical representation, but when we're talking about precision, we're going to eliminate this choice. So really what's happening here is that a pie graph talks about a part to whole relationship. So the circle being the whole and parts of it being the shaded parts of the graph or the pie slices in the graph. So the best choice here would be our first choice. Which of the following best illustrates the concept of the slope of a line? Is it the point where the line intersects the x-axis? Is it the point where the line intersects the y-axis? Is it the length of the line segment between two points on the line? Or is it the steepness of the line is the ratio of the change in y to the change in x? All right, so they give us a system of equations here, and they graph the blue line and the red line. So the first choice on here, the point where the line intersects the x-axis, well, that would be the concept of the x-intercept. So remember, we're specifically looking for, in this case here, slope, okay? So my next choice is the point where the line intersects the y-axis, and that would be the concept of y-intercept. So we're not talking about slope in this case. And then the third choice is the length of the line segment between two points on the line. So this would be introducing the concept of the distance formula, using the distance formula to calculate the distance between two lines. So our best answer and the best choice here would be the fourth choice where it talks about the steepness of the line is the ratio of the change in y to the change in x. So that is really our definition of slope.
A Venn diagram comparing the sets of rational numbers Q and irrational numbers I within the real numbers R. The diagram shows two non-overlapping circles within the larger circle representing the real numbers, with the left circle labeled Q rational numbers and the right circle labeled I irrational numbers. Why is every real number either rational or irrational? Is it because real numbers include both whole numbers and fractions? Because real numbers can be graphed on a number line? because real numbers encompass terminating, repeating, or non-repeating decimal expansions? Is it because real numbers can be either positive or negative? All right, so let's first talk about what is a rational number. A rational number can be expressed as a fraction A over B, where A and B are integers. So for example, all of our whole numbers are considered rational because we can make it a fraction by putting it over one. For example, five, three over two, one half. Those are all rational numbers. Now what would be our irrational numbers? Well our irrational numbers cannot be represented as a fraction of two integers. So for example, the square root of two would be considered irrational and pi would be considered irrational the square root of seven would be irrational. And then what happens with these is that they have a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. So their decimals go on forever and ever and ever. So for example, like pi, you can keep expanding the decimals out and they're non-repeating. So let's look at our choices that we have here. One choice is because real numbers include both whole numbers and fractions. Well, we're forgetting about the irrational there, so that choice is gonna be eliminated. Because real numbers can be graphed on a number line. Well, our rationals can, but our irrationals, because they keep repeating, it's difficult to represent them on a number line because they never stop with their decimals. So that choice is eliminated. The last choice, because real numbers can be either positive or negative, zero is also a real number. That is neither positive nor negative, so I'm going to eliminate that choice. So the correct answer would be because real numbers encompass terminating, repeating, or non-repeating decimal expansions. That concludes our test, Praxis Mathematics Test 5165, Tasks of Teaching Mathematics. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to visit study.com for more problems like this and access to personalized learning plans. Thanks for watching.